here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is a little bit of tabletop decor and shelf decor. I will be making a one funky bow and two arrangements once we get over to the kitchen island but i'm going to go ahead and clean the top of this credenza off and i've put away some of my uh, not much I've, i'm going to pretty much put back on here what i had but i do want to redo the centerpiece so i'm going to get everything put back on here except for the centerpiece and then we're going to walk over to the ivy table and the shelf above that and we're going to decorate that except for a funky bow and a centerpiece. And I'll explain as I go what I'm doing. Uh, and then on Friday, we'll be coming back for this cozy corner that sits right here. Chris is gonna do a little bit of uh, transforming of this lantern, I'm hoping, so that I can put some electric uh, pastel lights in there so they can turn on and off with the remote you know that i use with the elect what is it electricity or whatever i'll put a link for that where i can turn on all of my accent lights with one remote and it, they're all attached to one thing so that they all go on and go off at the same time when i hit my one button on my remote regardless of all that i'm going to go ahead and point my camera down and uh we're going to get started on this little bit of decor today i'm excited we're zipping on along. This is, what is this? Episode three, I think. So we'll have three and four this week. And then we'll have probably five and six next week. We'll, we'll just go with it and we'll see how far we get. Let me get this camera tilted down a little bit and, and focused on the top of this credenza. And then we're going to get started doing a little tabletop decor here. Be right back in just a second when I get my camera situated, which is half the battle with when taping all this stuff is, is camera angle. <laughs> oh, drives me crazy. All right, I'll be right back in just a second. Okie dokie, here we go. I've got my camera angle just about how I want it. And I wanted to show you that I've been trying not to buy a ton of stuff. <laughs> I'm really trying hard not to and trying to utilize what I've already what I already have in the house here and these candles are a good example of me just using what I already have here at the house I'm trying to bring a little bit of the yellow in because I'm going to be doing some yellow stuff over here in this corner and there's a little bit of yellow over on the fireplace too and I'm trying to bring a little bit of yellow, a gold yellow in, not a canary yellow. So this, so this is kind of like a, a gold color. It's kind of telescoping, very yellow there. It's really not as yellow as it looks there. It's more of a, more like it looks back there. I don't know why it's looking more yellow up here. Look at the difference in that. That's how it looks, really. And I just cut these candles down. These were, what are they, 10 inch tapers? And I just came in here and I said, okay, I want them to be underneath the TV. I need to make all of this stuff kind of low profile out here because we watch TV, obviously, you know, and we don't want this interfering with our line of sight. So cut those two candles down so that they would sit just underneath the TV. Then I picked this up at AC Moore the other day. I didn't haul it because I didn't pick anything but this and some ribbon that I will show you as we go through the, the process here. Uh, but I did, this was in the same, and I, you know what? I didn't even look at how much this was because I knew it was cheap. I think it was less than $5. Uh, it was in the same place where I got those placemats that you'll see in a minute here when I go to put them on the ivy table. So this is the first thing I wanna do. This is a 72 inch runner. And I realize it kind of looks a little bit southwesty looking, which I'm not really into southwest decor. Not that I don't like it. I think it's very pretty, but not necessarily for my house. But it also looks like, you know, a spring, like Easter egg kind of a look. And it has all the colors that I'm going to be working with. The blues and the golds and the, and the light greens and a little bit of red and a little bit of burgundy, you know? So... I just thought this was really pretty. I am going to incorporate the Holy Family here into this decor too somehow. But first thing I want to do is put my runner on the table here. Can't 
can't decide whether I want these boxes on this side, I have a plate. And I may pull the plate. Well, no, I'll probably leave the boxes there. Obviously, the flower, or the uh, tray centerpiece is going to go right in the middle. Here's my battery pack. This is not the most expensive of runners, so it is wanting to kind of needs a little help. You straighten it out a little bit <laughs> so it looks straight. Okay. I did iron it. You would never know. All right. Hopefully when things get put back up here, it'll look a little better. But I know I want my candlesticks to go on either side somehow. Whether they'll be tilted or whether they'll go straight, I don't know. Like that. And then I want, I'll go ahead and leave those boxes there. For now you can see the gold in the top box. Gold in the candles. And then the plate is the same plate I had up there. I just removed it so I could clean it. But family ties are special threads. And it says the same thing as the boxes. Family ties are special threads. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> so this will go on this side. My Dickens houses stay. And then I have my family pictures. And I do want to go ahead and put them back up. And they're in red frames, and I'm going to leave them in red frames. Beautiful, Kristen. And beautiful Candace. smaller pictures. Sometimes I put them away when I decorate with the seasons, but I think I'll see if I can fit them here. Handsome Chris with some lady there in her sunglasses. And then me with Jovi, bless her heart, Gracie and Sam. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see. I have a couple of bunnies here. And a couple of little, again, I'm, it's very, very subtle what I'm trying to do. Not, you know, I got these at AC More too. They were 40% off of, oh, I don't know. I didn't save my receipt. But where do I want them? Let's see. I might end up taking these little pictures down. be all right right there. I'm going to move this around once I get the centerpiece in there. I think that looks okay. Somebody complained about seeing the back of my head last week. Sorry about that. I do have to move around a little bit. All right. I think that looks okay for now. 
Not sure about the Holy Family there. That might be a little much. So that's it for now. I'm going to leave this up here for now. And let's move over to the ivy table. And we're going to just put everything on the ivy table except for the centerpiece that I'm going to make for there and a funky bow. All right, you guys, here we are over here at the ivy table. This is the ivy table sitting right down here called the ivy table because it used to be a different color and it used to have ivy leaves painted on the front of it. Uh, but Chris painted it black and distressed it. And then I found this shelf at a local country store and uh, to pair with the table. So this is what I call my ivy table, kind of cozy corner-ish ivy table. So I'm gonna be putting some different decor up on the shelf and I'm gonna be redecorating the top of the table too. I'm gonna to be making a centerpiece for the center of the table and I'm going to be making can you guys see this funky bow I don't think you can I have a funky bow see it there hanging on the leg of that easel that's holding up that plate the plate's going to get taken down and something else is going to be put up there and I'm going to make a new funky bow for there so we will have a funky bow tutorial in this video so Oh, sorry. So I'm going to go into fast motion. I'm going to do a little clean in here. Okay, this is the picture that's going to go up here in this corner. Well, I think it'll stay there right on the edge. Oh, that's close. <laughs> And then I want to put Happy Easter right here. I'm going to do a funky bow to hang right there. Happy Easter. And then I thought I would use these two dudes up here. They're so cute. And then I have these. I just happen to have these two. I did not buy these. Trying to bring a little bit of the lighter and airier colors in, you know. So this is kind of a turquoise kind of blue. Just a touch. And I usually put them right about like that. pictures and I have a little willow tree figurine little girl reaching up Funky bow there, and maybe some Easter eggs or something laying here. So I think that will look pretty. I think so. All right, so let me drop my camera down here. Okay, now, get the trash out of the way. And clean up my workspace here. And I am going to put these aside for now. I don't know whether I will bring them back in another capacity, but I'm going to clean it off. I'm going to put myself in a batch motion. Okay, 
Here are the tapestry placemats that I got at and that a couple weeks last week, a couple weeks ago, and I'm just going to line three of them side by side here and see how that works. Hopefully you're not going to be able to tell that is three separate pieces when I'm done. The most important things in life, faith, family, and friends. Now, and again, all of this stuff is from last year. Okay. I think I would rather have these two kind of be in a little closer. We'll see. Now I'm going to bring us over and put us on the kitchen counter or the kitchen island and we're going to get to making some centerpieces and pull all this stuff together here and a funky bow. All right, I'll be right back when I'm set up over on my island. Here we are back at the island, and I'm getting ready to make up two flower arrangements, a funky bow, and then a little tiny arrangement to go on kind of the on one of the ends on the uh, ivy table. So after much frustration, to be honest with you, I have come up with a way that I want to do the centerpiece for the credenza. So I'm going to turn my camera and put it pointed down, and we are going to start putting that together with the stuff that I used last year, but with a little bit of a, a change for this year. So, all right, I will be right back. Well, let me just pull this over and see if I can get you all down and situated in a way that you can look at this. This one is going to be for the credenza. This one is going to be for the ivy table. And then I'm gonna make up just a little quick arrangement in here for the ivy table and I am going to make a candle ring out of my pipberry garland to go on that big spool candle that I have out there two of them so let's get started with this one for the credenza though and I got this gar or this uh, flower garland I believe it was from either Michaels or Hobby Lobby for 40 or 50% off at the end of the summer last year. And I honest to goodness have used it right straight through the winter, only it's been covered with pip berries and it's, you know, but it makes for a nice base. Now I'm really liking it because it's got the reds and the yellows and everything and, and some of the colors of Easter that I'm gonna be using. And of course I'm gonna be adding things to this. So I had a, uh, and I also want to use this Florida Lee candle holder. And as you know, I love Florida Lee, and there is Florida Lee wrought iron pieces hanging above the credenza, above the TV. So I want to pull the Florida Lee down into this arrangement. I had this candle, this is a battery operated candle. Well, I decided I'm not gonna worry about having a battery operated candle in there. And at first I did bring this in because I do have this gold candlestick but and I tried to put that down in there and with a candle on it that was just going to be too tall and I was like well that looks silly so I didn't want to use that and this is not quite the gold that I'm looking for that's more of a fall gold not a soft buttery yellow you know so this is a gold but it will pair nicely and this is as close as I can get to just a regular candle uh, you know so but it's too short if I just put that down in there well, that would look pretty silly, wouldn't it? Just to have that way down in there. I do want to lift it up a little bit. So, 
I had this candle ring that I had made last, I don't know, whenever I put it in here, and you can see I've wired it together. So I'm going to go ahead and put that break back down in to this, maybe. And then I'm going to use this glass candle holder to put right down in there. I need to bring it over here for just a second. And you can't even see that. See that? You can't even see it. And then when I, but it lifts the candle up. And that candle will pair nicely with the two candles and the black candle rings that I have sitting out there. So there we go. So that's how I'm going to start this. And the only other thing that I have for this, as you can see, it says Credenza Centerpiece. And as you know, I'm using these gold Easter eggs out there. And I've got these two little bunny heads. So, and I've got some kind of the gold color throwers. So let me see if I have, if this is just one piece or if this is two. Oh, I think it's just one piece. So I'm simply, just like I do my lanterns, I kind of am treating this like a lantern centerpiece. Only, of course, I don't have to really worry too much about the back of it. I will put a Gerber back there, but I don't have to worry too much about it because you really not keep, you can see it a little bit, but you know, not like you can the front. Okay. Of there we go. Sorry, this thing makes an ungodly sound when I move it every time. So I'm just gonna take some Gerbers, just very simply place these kind of here because I want my bunnies. I think I want them back here. And the Gerber just kind of snug down in there. Stand up there, dude. We're just peeking out behind him. That's cute. So I've gotten to the point, you guys, where I create as I go with you guys here with me. I can get it to stand up on the handle. There we go. <laughs> here we go. That looks cute. And again, it doesn't have to be an over-the-top, big, fat arrangement with a lot of different uh, parts and pieces and time to, you know, it, I, I'm going to take this back apart, you know, when Easter is over. And I'll make something for summer, you know. So I don't want something permanent in, in my, around my lanterns or in my centerpieces like this. I want to be able to switch things out and remake them for the season so that I'm not forever what would I do with all those arrangements, you guys? <laughs> I mean, I would have a ton of flower arrangements and stuff, and I'm not selling my stuff, you know? And so why in the world would I wanna make, uh, you know, 500 different arrangements and have to store them? And, you know, this way I can remake it every year and I reuse the same materials every year, but it looks new and fresh because I haven't seen it in a year, you know? So I love this, I think this is wonderful. And I'll be honest, if I can find a better candle for in here, this is the only thing I have. I do not have like a buttery cream candle. I, I'm gonna be on the lookout for one because now that this is together, I really don't care for that candle in there. I really would rather it be like the gold color of the candles on either side. That's, that's the Credenza centerpiece. Cute, cute, cute. All right, so let's move it out of the way. Sorry. And this is to go like I said, on the ivy table. And this is the same staple pieces that I use in every arrangement. I've used, I used it in the fall. Then I used it for, I did, I put it away for Christmas because, you know, I had all my vintage Christmas trees and stuff out. But then I brought it back out for, you know, my cozy country decor after Christmas, after Christmas. And now I'm going to do it for my, redo it for Easter. And then I'll redo it again for summer, probably, because I'm going to have I'm not sure what I have in here. Here is the ivy black table. So let's see what goodies await us in this. Oh, I don't think I did. I think I got these from Factory, uh, Factory Direct Craft, I think. 
I think. <laughs> Don't quote me. Anyway, here we go. And I have no idea how I had this, so we're going to wing it. And I'm going to start. I can see that I had this. I'm not going to worry about ironing this. There's no point. It's just something so that you're not looking at the bare wood and so things don't slip and slide around. There we go. And like I've said before, I always like to have my work. The if I'm gonna have two things that are alike, I always put the taller one of the two on the left hand side. I have no idea why, it just makes my eyes happy to do that. So I'm gonna set these right next to one another. So there we go, I have the two candle rings put up in there. Oops, come back here, buddy. Let's see if I can turn this on, yeah, they're still working. And little candles with those 2032 batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and put this, these stars back in there, I think. And here's all the parts and pieces I, ha I worked with before. And I want to, I think I'm gonna add one of these little hip fairy garlands to around the bottom of it. Or some of it anyway. I don't think I might, I might not need the whole thing. Just something to give me a little bit of a base and a little bit of interest on either side. She went in the middle and Getting quiet on y'all. Sorry. If I had two eggs, I probably had one on either side of her. Maybe I'll go try to find another egg. <laughs> cute, cute, cute. And the candles in it. I think it looks pretty. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And remember, this is just an accent arrangement. Something to just pull everything together on the table. All right. I'll set this over here. Now, I have this cute little bowl. What did I do with it? And here, I had these little eggs. This is just from, I think, the Dollar Tree or something from last year. And I just wanted to use the rest of this. of eggs. Not a big deal. I 
Okay, next thing, I want to make two little candle rings. Trash over there. Save my lip blocks. Open this up. This silly lone egg. I could have put it in there too, couldn't I? <laughs> I'm not one to put that egg anywhere. <laughs> okay, let me get a couple of table ties. And these don't have to be anything major either, although I think I would like it doubled up just to make it a little bit fuller. And I want one to sit on the top and one to sit around the bottom of my spool candle. The one on the top needs to have a, looking over there to look at it. I need to be able to get it down over the, the light bulb, but it doesn't need to be as large as the one on the bottom. So let me, let me see about that much, that'll work. Tie them together so that they don't come apart. I need to make sure I have all <laughs> pieces. And that's it. Now, the only thing left to do is to make a funky bow. I'll use the ribbons I've chosen to use. I'm going to make a 12, yes, I said a 12 <laughs> loop bow. I'll be right back. I have a girlfriend texting me and she needs a little help. Hang on. Right Okie dokie, I'm back. And now I'm going to make a funky bow. And I'm going to use, like I said, I'm going to have a 12 loop bow and I'm going to use all these different ribbons. I just couldn't pick three, so I picked four. <laughs> so, let's get started on this. And I'm going to cut each ribbon, I'm gonna cut three strips out of each ribbon at 26 inches long. So, let me do that. I'm gonna do, I'll do one first. Sorry about the loud noise there. Let me do one color first and get it and show you how I dovetail. And then I will speed through the cutting and dovetailing part of all this ribbon. Isn't that cute ribbon? Look at that, you guys. I think this is going to make a really pretty funky bow. I hope. Anyway, 26. So three strips of 26 inch lengths. And the reason I choose 26 inch lengths is because I want eight inch tails and I want a five inch loop. So when I fold it in half and get a five inch loop, that is an eight inch tail. So that's how I do it. And the way I dovetail is different from how everybody else does, as I mentioned the other day. <laughs> Just fold it in half lengthwise and I go to the edge. Most people go to the fold, you can do it either way. Either way works and get a sharper pair of scissors than I have. Oh my goodness. And cut up. We're down from the fold or up from the edge. And that gives you points. All right, let me get my cutting done and I'll be right back and we are gonna put together a really pretty, I hope, funky bow. Be right back.
Okie dokie, there we go. I am ready to start making this bow. Whew, it is gonna be a size, but I'm gearing up to do it. I can do it. I've also cut just one long piece of the plaid because I'm gonna make two tails out of that. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. There goes Gracie clicking around. She's doing a little better, by the way, thankfully. So here we go. I'm gonna fold it right in half. And because I'm doing an even numbered bow, an even numbered looped bow, I'm going to do the first four colors one direction. Up from my up from center, meaning my fingers are center. And then I'm going to do the next four pointed down, and then I'm going to do the next four pointed up. So we're going to see how that works. This is a new one for me. I don't think I've made a 12 loop bow before. So anyway, I want to make sure that my loops are five inches, so I measure my five inch loops and I go to the underneath tail and I twist. And next, again, fold it right in half. It doesn't have to be perfectly folded in half. It's okay, because you're probably gonna trim some of the tails down anyway. And again, we're gonna go all four, four different colors up one direction four different patterns and colors, I should say. Again, make sure you have your five inch loop. Go to that underneath one and twist. And then this pretty gold color. I was determined to try to decorate with a little bit of yellow, a little bit of this goldy yellow. I think it's bright and sunny and pretty. And it's something that I don't normally decorate with. So I'm challenging myself. Okay, so there we go. We have our first four loops going one direction, and here's all the tails. Now we're gonna start over again with our color pattern. And make sure we have a five inch loop, and we're gonna turn it, and we're gonna point that loop down from center and twist that back tail. Center, again, being my thumb, we're working down and you don't have to worry if they are exactly when you're adding them side by side by side just so you get them going in the same direction it's okay if they kind of pile on top of one another when you're doing that okay and again down twist and next Down, twist, and yellow. And down. Okay, last four. I'm gonna turn them the other direction again and we're going to go up you can see that it's taking up pretty much all the way down to the crook of my thumb and it just keeps sliding in there and that's fine that is absolutely fine I'm still managing to hang on to it and that's the important thing And two more. Whew, my hand is cramping though. I would be a fibber. One more. Woohoo! And I'm going to go ahead and add, I think, that in while I'm at it here. Oh my goodness, but my hand is hurting. Wowee. Okay, here's this one big long piece. And let me find the center of it. Or somewhere close to the center, and I'm just gonna add that into the back. All right, then I want to grab my pipe cleaner, and I wanna go 
find the middle of the pipe cleaner and then kind of go right over the top and grab it with your two fingers kind of underneath and feed it through and around the side of your hand and then lift that finger and kind of smush it over there. Use the hand that you're holding the bow shut with as resistance, pull tight and twist. As tight as you can. And shake that hand out. And there we have a jumble of ribbon right now. But we're gonna make it into a really pretty bow. So the next thing and the most important thing in my mind is the fluffing. And I probably will take some of these tails down a little bit, just trim them down. I don't think they need to be quite that, but you know what, I always like to start them bigger, and then if I wanna you know, trim them down, I can. To just, you know, take some time and fluff out every single loop, and don't forget them. And yank them around and pull them around and make them go the way you want them to go. Make sure all of them can be seen and there's not any tuck down underneath. Straighten them out. I am gonna do some trimming now. I think that has almost got it. Now, is that not a pretty bow? Oh my goodness, you guys. Ugh, so pretty. But I'll even do some more tweaking when I get it up on that corner of that picture holder. But I'm loving it. All right, I will be right back for some final words in front of the camera. In fact, let me just see if I can get you fixed here. I'm kind of centered and, oh my goodness, it's been a day. What can I tell you guys? Oh my goodness. All right, here I am with my bow. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. I might have make that my uh, thumbnail, for goodness sakes. That is so pretty. But I am finished with the credenza and the ivy table and the ivy table shelf and the funky bow that goes on the ivy table. Uh, and I'm really happy with how it all turned out. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything into place and then I'll come back behind the camera and we'll do a little walk around to all of the different little places that we decorated today. And I think next up in the next video will be my cozy corner. And Chris is going to do something pretty cool for me to the lantern so that I can incorporate some pastel lights inside the lantern. So we'll see if he can, if he can do that anyway. We'll see. He's going to try. So, all right, you guys. So I'll say goodbye to you here and then I'll say goodbye to you again behind the camera. But I hope that all is well with everyone. And once again, I hope that there's nothing that's, you know, nagging at you, pulling at you, and trying to pull your attention away from what you want to be focused on or need to be focused on. I hope that you are, your health is going along as it should and that everything is uh, fine with you guys. <laughs> Y'all are always in my thoughts and prayers. And I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good care good care. I'll be back in a minute behind the camera. Bye-bye for now when I'm looking at you. Okie dokie, here we go. Everything in place. Y'all remember my gold Easter that I found at Joann's. I hauled that last week. I ended up taking the pictures, the small pictures, one with me with the pups and me with Chris. I ended up taking them down, it was too cluttered. I didn't like how it looked. So I kept the little bunnies up and I did keep the Holy Family there because I'm gonna keep that out all year. And then I just added those little burlap egg trees. And then there is that centerpiece. And again, I'm gonna be looking for a different candle for in there that's too gold. I want it more that color. 
I'm super happy with how it worked out. And it works in beautifully with the hearth and the mantle. It's kind of pulling it all together there. And of course that looks like a eyesore there, but we'll get her done next. And then here is the ivy table. I'm really happy with this. This is such a fun little table to put together. And again, I just reused my tray, repurposed it and candlesticks and just made it look like Easter. And then to make it look like spring, I might not do anything but pull the eggs out. And uh, I might even leave those pit berries in there for spring. Shucks, the bunny's cute for spring. Why not, you know? There's but, of course, berries. we're around that spool candle. And there is the little pit berries and eggs and the little bowl. Just little accents, just to pull things out and through the whole design. Here's where the funky bow landed. <laughs> it's my Kincaid picture. I think it looks yeah. pretty when you get back from it. Look at these dudes with their ears. <laughs> They're so cute. But I ended up putting just picks. Those are egg picks I got from AC Moore. One there, one there, and one back here. Let me see if I can get back and take the whole thing here. Hopefully there's not a dog behind me. There we go. It just looks pretty. It's coming together, you guys. Slowly but surely, it's coming together. All right, I'll be back Friday, I believe, with that cozy corner over there and a lantern swag for on that lantern. That should be fun to do. Another funky bow. All right, until next time, <laughs> y'all take good, good care.